All right, then there are customer interviews. Now, who remembers what a customer is? People who make the decision to purchase the product. Now, are customers always users? No, they're not. A lot of times there are, but there certainly are times where your customers, in the way that we're talking about it, are not going to be the users of the product. Now, you do want to talk to the users, but do you think you want to talk to the person who's going to decide whether they're spending the money or not? Absolutely. You need to know what their concerns are, because their concerns are likely going to have differences from that of users. A lot of users don't know how much enterprise products cost. Right? You tell them, oh, I got a great deal on this enterprise product. It was only $500,000. What do you think happens to your end user? They keel over in shock. They're like, what? How is that a good deal? Because it's usually a million dollars. Now they're passed out. Right? So you need to know what is it that the person who's holding the money and makes that decision, what are they thinking? And what are they looking for? It's another important aspect. So, as we've mentioned before, for enterprise products, medical products, a lot of technologies, it's often an executive or IT manager, not your end user. Now, with customer interviews, a lot of times people will say, well, okay, so what do I ask them? Right, because I'm thinking of customers as the person who is also the end user. Well, here's some of the differences. There's a lot of overlap, but here's some of the differences. Here's what you want to ask them. You need to understand what are their goals in purchasing the product. Those goals are not necessarily the same as the end users. Right, there will be overlap. I'm sure they're going to want something where their employees can be very efficient and effective. Right, but they may also be looking for things like more of what they want than why they want it. I would say you really need to know both to really understand because those, those don't always exactly mesh. Sometimes they'll tell you, this is what I want, but when you talk to them and you find out why they want it, it doesn't ha have a one-to-one uh, -one correspondence. It may be that they have some idea about the technology that's incorrect. So it's better to understand both. All right, so what are their goals in purchasing the project, uh, product? Right, are they worried about performance? Are they worried about security? Use, end users are probably not going to be so worried about that. What are the frustrations with the current solutions? We, of course, have talked about the frustrations of the user. What about the frustrations of the, I, you know, the IT people that have to maintain it? I think that's going to be important if the CIO is the one who's making the decision. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Very important to know. What is the decision process for purchasing a product of this type? So can you just take your company credit card and just pay for it like you go and you go to Best Buy? You think it works like that everywhere? No, it doesn't. Especially when you are dealing with government. How many of you have ever had any experience or have any knowledge of the uh, purchasing process with government? No idea? It is so much fun. I'm being sarcastic. So you can't just take your credit card and go over to Best Buy and say, oh, look at that $500,000 product. Here you go. You also can't go and say, well, you know, my buddy over here has this company, and they have this product. We're going to get it from them. You really have to have what's called transparency when you work for the government. What does this do? It causes lots of red tape. The typical process, when it is, when it is above a certain threshold in terms of amount of money, sometimes it's $5,000, sometimes it's $10,000, sometimes it's more than that, you have to go through a bidding process. So what do you do? 
all right, I want to buy new accounting software for my accounting department. What do we need to do? We actually need to create this really long, detailed document that specifies what exactly we want and what the process is going to be to make sure we are being fair about selecting a product. So this is often called an RFP. Let me see, uh, RFP is a RF proposal funding, uh, requirements for proposal funding, something like that. But anyway, it's an RFP. So I'm a government agency. I put out the RFP. It's a nice 20 to 40 page document. And if you want to try to sell your product, you take that document, you read it in detail, and you write a proposal where the proposal, a nice long proposal, it's not a nice one page, oh, here, here's a breakdown of the costs. You have to answer every question that they ask in their RFP. You're essentially writing a report as to why you should be one of the ones considered to be able to sell them this product. Now, usually you may have a month, you may have two months, you may have three months, depending on the complexity, to submit your RFP. Excuse me, submit your response to your RFP. Do you think you get paid for that? No, you do not. You do not get paid for that. So you submit your proposal by the deadline. And by the way, with most agencies, you miss the deadline by one minute. So sad, too bad. They're not as nice as me. Actually, when I was a CIO, I was mean too. One minute passed. Forget it. Now, actually, you act, unfortunately, you really need to do that um, in the government because otherwise you're not being fair when someone complains. I was mean at one point in my life. So don't make it come out of me. You don't believe me? I know I'm so awesome, aren't I? I'm just kidding. All right, you get the proposal, right? Then you have a whole process where you have usually at least two, sometimes three people who are reviewing your proposal. And you get a score on your proposal and then they have this big meeting and they decide to narrow it down to say three to five products and those companies will be invited to come and give them a presentation. How long do you think that process takes? A day? A couple days? A couple weeks? Months. A lot of times it will take months. So now let's say you have gone through that process, you've made it in, now you've been invited to give a presentation. So you're going to spend all this time preparing this presentation. You have to find out who's going to be there. What are they interested in? Do this great presentation where you are selling your product. Who's paying for that time? You are. They're not paying you to do that. You say, oh, do I get paid for giving a presentation? They're like, yeah, no. So you go, you take the time to, to put together your presentation. That's going to take another couple weeks. Then you go ahead, you give your presentation, you have to have time for all the companies to give presentations. Then they go and they have more meetings. Then they decide, okay, we want this company. They tell you that and now you start negotiations. How, how much time has passed? It could be a year. Months at least. It's a really long process. Now if you are a small business and you desperately need money next month, you think you're going to be trying to get a nice big fat government contract or are you going to try to get smaller ones and build up? Smaller ones and build up. So do you think you need to know this when you're talking to your customers? Yes. And I can tell you there are a lot of people that don't really understand the process with governments. Some nonprofit agencies are the same. Where you tell them the process and they're like, what? Are they crazy? But then there's transparency. Very important. Now, here's another thing that's important. What is their role in installation, maintenance, and management of the product? Who's installing it? Are they just buying it? And they're installing it, but you're providing support? Or do they expect you to install it? Two very different price points. Who's going to maintain it? Are you going to maintain it? Or are they going to have people maintaining it, but they will have a support number that they can contact if they need it? 
Again, two very different price points. Who's going to manage it? Who's going to manage the product with the end users? That's different from the technical maintenance. Whose hardware is it going to be sitting on? Whose network is it going to be using? All very different price points you need to understand. As well as any domain related issues and vocabulary, which we've actually talked about in the past, things like in the medical world and the word stat. You guys remember what that is, right? Right now. So you really need to make sure you understand a lot of these details from your customers who are not necessarily your end users. 